and go. Hey guys, hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day today or night tonight because I'm honestly filming this at night. Um, please don't judge me. I'm just filming it at night because I got to do children's ministry in the morning. So, you know, it is what it is. All right. We are in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. You can turn there now. Um, while you are turning there, I will show you a random item from the room. Oh man, there's a lot to choose from because I'm at home and uh, my child has many items. This one, this is a personal favorite here. These are dragon slippers. You put these on and the tongues flap, blow fire. They're adorable. If they were an adult size, I would wear them around the house. My son puts them on and he gets this grin like, <laughs> and it's adorable. So there's that. Hope you're turned in your bibles or on your phone to Colossians chapter Unero, uh, verse 21. I want to do a review. We've been going over, wow, that light is bright. Whoa, crazy. All right, anyway, um, we've been doing a review uh, of the gospel together, and we've been walking through it piece by piece. Uh, so just want to do a quick review of what we've reviewed. Review of what we, that worked, we'll go with it. All right, first, we learned everybody has sinned, all right? Every human being has sinned, and with that sin, there is a price, there is a, a cost attached to it, and that price is death. Separation from God, and the pouring out of God's wrath on everybody who sinned, and that's everybody. So we start off with the problem, but then we talked about the solution, right? There has to be something that we are saved from if we're talking about being saved. And we talked about that's the problem. We have to be saved from our sin and the consequences of our sin. But the solution is Jesus. The solution is not us working or trying to do or trying to achieve our salvation by um, living a good life or trying to not sin because we can never be perfect. We've all already messed up in some way and we'll continue to mess up. And God's standard is perfection. So we can't earn salvation. We can't remove our own sin. Well, what can we do? What is the solution? It's Jesus. Putting our faith in Jesus and asking for forgiveness of our sin because Jesus already did the work on our behalf. Jesus offered his life for our life. He offered his life and he was a substitution in our place for our sin. He took our sin upon himself, like that crown of thorns pressed on his head. He, he took that sin upon himself and then he took the wrath of God for us and he died in our place. And he offers us this free gift that anyone who puts their faith in Jesus and asks for forgiveness of their sin, they actually repent of their sins, can be saved. So we're not saved by our own work. We're saved by the work of Jesus. So that's the review. But I, I want us to talk about what our standing is then before God when all this takes place. What, where's our standing before God? Um, you know, like you're kind of wondering like what's your, what your standing with like a friend? Like, are they angry at me? Are they not? Like sometimes like my wife and I will be sitting there and uh, maybe she's like, she's like giving me this like look like, and I'm like, I don't know, am I, am I in trouble? Like, what's my standing right now for my wife? I'm a little scared right now. Um, usually I'm okay. I survive. I, I provide uh, Girl Scout cookies, and that helps a lot of problems. So, guys, I'm trying to help you out. All right, moving on. Um, I did buy some Girl Scout cookies today, by the way. Thin mints. All right, buy Chick-fil-A. Amazing. Moving on. I'm getting distracted by Girl Scout cookies. All right, so Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22 says this. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. So the verse starts off and it says, Hey, listen, all of us, we were once enemies of God. We were separated from him with our evil actions and thoughts. I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without thought, oh, without fault. So this verse basically says, hey, listen, um, all of us, um, all of you guys in particular who I'm writing to, um, all of you were once enemies of God. All right, there's a line in the sand. God's on that side, you're on the other side. Um, if you're playing a sport, 
Um, you don't want to be on the opposing side of the best player, right? You want to be on the team, the best player. If you're going to uh, have a war, um, you don't want to be on the wrong side of that war from God, okay? Because you will lose, because he never loses. He is all powerful. And I, I joke about it, but he, he is all mighty and powerful. You do not want to feel his wrath. You do not want to be on the opposing side of him. You want to be on his team, probably hiding behind him, relying on him heavily, all right? And so the author starts off and says, look, you were all enemies of God once. Well, what does that mean? Enemies of God? That sounds intense. Well, because all of us were sinners and are sinners, and God is opposed to evil and sin, we start off and we are in opposition to God. We're in rebellion to God, all right? So in order for us to be reconciled to him, which means to be brought back together with him, to be on his side, to be welcomed into his fold and his family, our sin has to be removed. And even further than that, we must be given the righteousness of Christ, all right? So remember what we talked about last week with Jesus. Jesus made a way for us to be reconciled, to be brought back into relationship with God. He did this through dying for our sins, offering us a chance to be forgiven. So, so if we're on the opposite sides of God because of our sin, Jesus offers us a chance to be forgiven of our sin. And then Jesus offers us a chance to be given his righteousness by putting our faith in him. So if we do that, we then have no fault um, of our own that would cause us to be an enemy of God. Meaning there is no reason that God would be angry at us any longer because all of our sin, past and present and future, has been forgiven by God or forgiven by Jesus. So if all of our sin's gone, God's problem with us is gone. But even further than that, as I said, I keep saying this phrase, I really want you to understand it. We've been given the righteousness of Jesus. Which means, as this verse says, um, as a result, he brought you before into his own presence. You are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Sometimes when we think about standing before God, it feels intimidating and scary because we're like, man, God can see all my sin. He can see all my mistakes. He can see all the things I've done wrong. I'm afraid that he would be angry at me. And it is true. There is obviously anger for sin. But all the anger that God would have against your sin has already been poured out on Jesus if you put your faith in him. That anger is gone. When God looks at you, he looks at you with love and compassion. I, I uh, once asked a bunch of middle schoolers, we were having a devotion together, and asked them to close their eyes and imagine God and just have like a moment and ask yourself, what, what do you picture God's face being like or an interaction with God being like? And they opened their eyes and most of them were different answers. Some of them were like, I kind of picture like, um, you know, my interaction with God, like I'm in front of his throne and I'm like embarrassed or like I'm afraid or I feel distant. But the Bible says right here that one day, if we put our faith in Jesus, when we stand before God's throne, we can stand there holy and blameless without a single fault. We can stand there with confidence. Now, not because you have tried really hard in your life or you've gone to church, or you read the Bible, or none of those things. We have no confidence in ourselves, but we can stand there with confidence because of what Jesus did for us on our behalf. That's a wonderful thought that we can stand there. And, and, and here's the beautiful part. When God looks at you, he will look at you with the same love that he has for his son. We are made spiritually alive by believing in the gospel of Jesus. We are welcomed into the family of God where he looks at us as sons and daughters. And we go from being enemies of God who he's ready to crush to then being welcomed into his presence with love and with joy and with pride. We can stand before God, not on our own account, but by the work of Jesus. This is a wonderful place to be on his side in his family, no longer enemies. We are then, and this entire process is called being justified. Justified by the work of Jesus, all right? And then after we achieve this new place by our faith in Jesus, 
by our repentance and, and, and belief in his work, we then can begin a new life as Christians. We can be begin a new life, not as rebels of God or enemies of God, but as followers of God, as children of God. And we can live on this earth a life that honors him and pleases him. We can share the gospel with others. We can resist temptation. We can practice our lives in the Holy Spirit and carry out the gifts that he's given to us. We can live an incredible life with the Lord here on earth and then again in eternity. It's a beautiful process. But this standing before God, this transition from being an enemy of God to a friend of God, all is possible again by the work of Jesus. I know I keep saying that, but I don't want us to put our faith in ourselves for going to heaven or for standing before God with pride, like, well, I'm doing pretty well. I can stand before God with my chin up because you think you're doing well. That's not the reason you can stand before God with your chin up. You can stand before him because of what Jesus has done. So, love you guys. Hope you're doing well. Praying for you guys. And uh, yeah, have a good day.